Okay, today I'm going to show you how to build an image, something that we produce here on campus every day. It's what runs our computer labs, office, uh, faculty offices, and a little bit of everything. So we're going to get started. As you see, I've got remote desktop right here. I've got some things already cooked up. So the first thing we do when we start building an image or we're going to deploy a room is we'll open up our Active Directory tool and insert our machine name. As you can see, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because that will give away our organizational group's security purposes. Uh, as you see, I have our uh, machine name already in place in the Active Directory. So now we're going to connect to our machine remotely. I had to do a little different because of uh, Adobe Captivate. So we're going to connect and it will ask us for our password. And it will show remote desktop. While we wait and wait some more. So we have our desktop. I have some things already in place, like it's already on our network. Um, well, before that, you'll install Windows and add it to your network. Or you don't have to add it to your network. You can just do a straight hard disk, do it straight from the hard disk without and downloading your software. So um, let's say we want to we want to create our image and we're going to install some updates. I like to use Ninite to get different software packages. So we're going to go to Ninite.com and download some software. So we'll download, oh uh, let's download Skype and um, Spotify. Um, let's download the flat, all the Flash and the software for the updates. Um, Paint.net and Malwarebytes. So we'll get the installer. And download and download. It's done. Come down here, and we're going to open the executable. Microsoft Security Sensor is going to complain about it. But we don't care because we trust it. So I was going to prepare the setup. Close this. I guess. Going to download Flash. Going to download another Flash. I'm going to wait for it to install. While we're doing that, we're can, we can come down here and we can change. Um, let's say we want to change how the background sets up or we want to add a, another user to the group or let's, let's add users to the administration group. So you would go to MMC exe and run that and you would come down here and you would add in a snap-in you got a list of all snap-ins and you want to add if you want to add local you, you want to add local users and groups and click add and then click finish and click OK so we have local user, groups and users we open this and we want to add somebody to the administration group. 
So we'll click administrators. And as you see, we have some things already in here. I'm going to add myself. So we go to add, and I type in my username. And you click check names. And you see there's two accounts. I have a root user account, and I have a user account. We want to add the user account. Click OK. Apply. And OK. And we can close this and say no. As you see, we've got some software populating. Uh, it'll show up here. And we're still waiting. While we're waiting, we can also change um, power settings. So I'm going to go into control panel, change power settings. Power options. Um, so we normally keep it on balance power load, and be able to change. We can change them now, and we normally have this display turn off in an hour. We never want the computer to sleep because there's a GPO that currently does that. That's on the network, and it tells the machines to shut down at a certain time during the day. I like that, oh, and we see this is ready. So, what we do is now that we have all of our software that we wanted up to date, updated, and software we wanted to add, get rid of these, clean up the desktop. Empty. Yes. We were we are going to take it off the network. So you go into change settings. Oh, no, we don't want to take it off the network. We are going to restart the machine. Or log off. We can log off. And I'm going to switch over and take it off the network. So I'll show you how to take it off the network first. Remote desktop. Since you can't see this part. Okay. So what we would do is take is log into the admin profile, which I can't show you because I'd have to be logged into the other machine. Um so we log in the admin profile and we click properties. Uh, but first, but wait, there's more. We would need this special tool. Enable a package. Smaller. We put that on the desktop, on the admin desktop. And we would open advanced system settings and we go to user profiles. Now we want to copy, I want to copy my profile, which is this one. So we click on this. Now I get rid of that first. Open this, click on user settings. And before we take it off the domain, we would enable this to be copied over. We would copy it over to this default profile. It's not going to do it because we are not in the admin profile. I'm currently logged into my profile. 
Well, let's see if it'll do it anyway. So it's done. So, yeah, see, it's not going to do it. So this copy tool will be over, and it'll pop up a window. And we copy the my profile over to this default profile, and we hit OK and hit OK, and close this window. Then I'm going to take it off the network because in order to upload it to the Go server, we would need to take it off the network because it doesn't play well when you re-add it to re when you re-nuke a machine to and then go and boot it up. It could cause some complications. So we're going to take it to a workload. So now we take it to T. And it's going to say you're about to leave this. Do you want to? And you're going to click OK. And then it'll ask for a username or passphrase. Of course, T group doesn't exist, or it's not going to do that. Sometimes it'll ask you to enter a username and passphrase for a work for a work group. The work group doesn't exist, so it doesn't have a username or a passphrase. So you can just type in T in the username and click OK. And then OK. And then close. And it'll ask you to restart the machine. You click OK. And that about wraps it up for this portion. Okay, so after that, we are going to restart the machine. I've already hit F12, and as you see, there we there's three selections. You're gonna, we're going to choose the onboard NIC, which is the network boot. And we're going to boot into what's called a pixie boot to upload the image 
to the network. And we're going to wait. And you have to hit F12 real quick or it's going to bypass it. And then, I don't know if you can see here, you choose the first option, which is Microsoft Windows PEX86. And it's going to go through and install, it's going to load what's called a pre-environment. And we wait. There's a lot of hurry up and wait. And we wait. And we wait some more. And we're almost done. I go through one more. Okay. And that's going to load into the pre environment. And see, it comes up with a nice little DOS window right there. Wait some more. And then it comes up with your pre environment. You see, we have options to wipe the disk, DOD the disk, which is a, a seven sector hard drive wipe. We got some ghost casting letters that we've assigned. Um, we have a ghost walk, which changes the SID. And we have some drive mappings. We're going to map the ghost 3 drive. Which, so we're going to type in the box down here. Map G3. And hit enter. And we're going to type in our username with the domain. This is hard to do with one hand. And we're going to hit enter. And it's going to ask us for a password. We're going to hit enter. And it's going to verify our password. And then we're going to go into the ghost console. So we're going to type G and hit enter. And it brings up the ghost 11 console. Look, we got a nice little GUI interface here. So we're going to click OK. And we're going to click Local. And Disk. And we're going to click To Image. And it's going to show us some OS volumes and the hard drive. So we're going to click the hard drive and click OK. Now it's going to ask us where do we want to store it. Well, we just mapped this drive, which is the I drive. And we're going to click on... Um, let's just click on new images we're gonna go special and we're just I'm just gonna save right in here and we're gonna give it a name we're gonna I'm gonna call it pod 01 for podcast number one and we're gonna click save we want a high compression rate and we're going to proceed with the image creation file yes and it's gonna populate some data shows the source, the destination, and current partition. We're going to get some time. It's going to show percentages, how fast it's going, how much is copied, how much remains, time elapsed, and time it's going to take. This is probably going to take about 20 minutes, and I'll be back. The source, the destination, and current partition. We're going to get some time. It's going to show percentages, how fast it's going, how much is copied, how much remains, time elapsed, and time it's going to take. This is probably going to take about 20 minutes, and I'll be back. Just how fast it's going, how much is copied, how much remains, time elapsed, and time it's going to take. This is probably going to take about 20 minutes, and I'll be back.
So now we're back and we're going to, our image is cooked up and we're going to remotely log into our machine again. As you can see, I've got remote desktop pulled up and if we click here, we'll type in our password and we'll click yes. Click OK. And we'll wait some more. And we'll wait some more. We'll wait some more. And wait some more. Okay. As you can see, I've already added the image back to the network. Um, so what you do there is you right-click my computer and go to properties, and you click change settings, and you click change, and you type in the name again. And then all you have to do is click this radio button, add, add ADS, it would ask you for a username and password to add it to the Active Directory. And you click OK, it would restart the machine, and we have your image. So there you have it. That's how you make an image and load it to the network.